can you smell la, la, how pristine the rock's business shirt is? <laughs> Hey guys, this is my review for Skyscraper. And first off, I want to say to all of my friends who worked on this film, it must have been an amazing experience not only to work with The Rock, but work on such a huge, big budget film in Vancouver. And it's just helping build Vancouver more and more as a big place for making movies. So good on you guys, to everyone who got to work on that. That must have been a great time. But now onto the movie. It's dumb. It's not super dumb. It's not Jurassic World 2 dumb, but it's a little dumb. The film is definitely a giant homage to Die Hard and The Towering Inferno, with a few intricacies of its own, but enough smoking Chekhov's guns that you're going to have to find a storage cabinet to hold all the guns in this. The film is about Dwayne The Rock Johnson's character, who's a security consultant for this big-ass, giant, mythical, futuristic-looking building called The Pearl and he and his family are the first residents inside this building. But on the day that they're about to think about opening it up for the residential areas, of course terrorist people come in and take over the building, but also at the same time start burning the building. And the terrorists are not that great. They're Blandy McBlandy terrorists. And it's unfortunate because Clearly, they want the main villain to be a Hans Gruber-like character. There's a lot of similarities in his actions and some of his dialogue moments, but the dude is terrible. I don't know why they thought this guy would be a great villain, because he looks menacing-ish, I guess, but in all honesty, he's one of the weakest parts of the movie. The best part of the movie, for sure, is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He brings a bit of a humanity to this character in terms of his motivation, his actions with his family, as well as certain moments through the climax. But the problem is, while they're trying to make this guy seem to be, you know, a family man and whatnot, yeah, sure, he's a former Special Forces guy, but he's supposed to be hindered because he's an amputee the motherfucker climbs that tower crane on the outside that's almost over a hundred feet of climbing and when he gets to the top he does it without any equipment by the way he does it completely freehand his shirt isn't torn his pants are fine and he's not completely drenched in fucking sweat it was right at this point i was like okay I know what kind of movie I'm going to get. Nev Campbell is not sidelined. She does have a few action moments here and there, which does help vary up the film, but she is basically the wife, but who can do a move here and there. Admittedly, the film is an entertaining piece. There are some great sex pieces. There's one thing that I actually thought that was really interesting was his adherence to using a gun and how that is a constant thing throughout the movie. The Rock himself, it does really push this film. He is definitely your driving point, as he does have some good funny lines in this film, but his motivation is definitely true. You see that this is probably his best performance of a character since... Be Cool? He does a great job of really putting his character on the line through the action sequences, through the emotional moments, and he definitely will be the draw for you guys. But in terms of just rewatchability, because the fact that it is Die Hard and The Tower Inferno put together, it has just as much resemblance to those movies as just saying the titles, really. The motivations for the terrorists is very, very bland, and the terrorists, literally, you only know two of them, instead of the whole group kind of that whole Die Hard-esque theme was while John McClane was one man, he was trying to figure out who these guys were. Yeah, there's the whole family aspect that he's trying to do, but in Die Hard, John McClane was trying to find Holly Gennaro, his wife. He was trying to save her, all the while taking down the terrorists, but the terrorists were his focus. In Skyscraper, his family is his focus, which rightly so, I guess, but in terms of how these villains function, they're idiots. They're complete idiots. However, the Towering Inferno bit is honestly a much better homage, in my opinion, than the Die Hard, because the constant tension of this fire building throughout is always prevalent. They keep a good eye on that, and they're always making sure that you know that this fire is 
burning the shit out of this building, yet it doesn't seem to be marking Dwayne The Rock Johnson's shirt at all. Like, near the end of the movie, he's covered in soot, yet his shirt is still that color. It's... Costume's fucked up there. Some people may enjoy it. Mind you, this theater was completely empty, and this was a Tuesday night. I think there was eight people in the theater besides me and my boss and, and his friend. But in terms of The Rock's movie collection, this definitely channels a few of his other films, like The Rundown, Walking Tall, and definitely Hobbs in terms of superpowers. But I guess this is a fun time if you're into something like this. It's not as stupid as San Andreas was, um, but it's not as fun as Rampage was. Rampage was dumb fun, but it was fun. This is just dumb amusement, I guess you would say. But that's just me. I'm not entirely a big fan of this film, but I know some people who will be. So in the end, I'm gonna give Dwayne The Rock Johnson's Skyscraper a 3 out of 7. Yeah, it's got some pretty good moments, and there's a lot of parts where he's like... Rrr. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.